Okay, to start with, I want to talk about e to the x and its twin sister. They are inverses of each other. I hope you knew this was e to the x. All right, and what's the one that goes with that? Log. In fact, it's natural log to be exact, ln x. Uh, I didn't do that perfectly because it makes it look like it's come down again. It keeps going up just really slowly. And then dotted line down the middle like this. All right, so this one's y equals e to the x. This one down here that I'll do over the top of it with green, y equals ln of x. And then this dotted line, which I'll do over the top in black, is y equals x, also known as the identity function. So why do we care? Because pretty soon you're going to be taking this function and doing all kinds of things with it, like moving it and flipping it and all that kind of stuff. So you need to know what it looks like in its parent form, in its natural state. All right. This, you just learned yesterday how to set up a log for this. So let's do a couple of the flip-flops back and forth between the two. This one you could rewrite as log base what? 10 of, and then which one is the next thing I write? 30 equals what? And is that something a person could put in a calculator? Yes, and a calculator would default to what base? 10. So this one I'd be fine. I'd just type in log 30. You would not type in log 1030. You would just type in log 30 because it defaults the 10. If I want to change this to log base 8 of 30, totally different answer, then you'd have to type in, I'm going to show you this quick because a lot of people are annoyed if I don't explain it because there's a way to do this in the calculator too. So grab your calculator and I'm going to show you how to do it. This is called a base change. It's really pretty simple. Instead of just typing in the t this number, you know, log 30 would be doing log base 10. I want log base 8. So here's what you do. You break it into two parts. I'm going to draw a line across just like that. And you do log 30 over log 8. If you divide those two, you'll get the answer. All right, that's how you put that kind in. When they have a base that's not 10, you would type in log 30 over log 8. So if I had, for instance, log 17, that assumes it's log base 10. So you just type in log 17. Done. What if they had log base 2 of 17? You'd type log 17 over log 2. Okay? That's how you put those in. All right. So now, let's do some more of these transporting back and forth. It's really, really important. Uh, get the terminology down here. This is the base and the a argument and the exponent. So here it's more logical. This is the base, of course. This is the exponent, of course. And the argument is the one on the other side. So when you're transporting back and forth between the two, from log form to exponential form, or vice versa, you got to be good at that. So you got to ask yourself, what's the base on this one? What's the base here? So I'd say x to the what? Third is equal to what? Negative 8. And then you could just ask yourself, what to the third is negative 8? What's the answer? Negative 2. And if you were not so good at that, you could say to the one-third power, to the one-third power, and your calculator would tell you it was negative 2. Okay? Let's do another one. This one's in exponential form. Write me a log for it, and I'll tell you if you wrote it right. Did you write it already? Good. Log in the front row. Uh, log and I just told you seconds ago how to put that into the calculator. You'd type in what? Try it with the calculator. If you need to borrow one, I have them up here. Rapido, por favor. Get the pretty pink one. There you go. And now, 
Those of you that typed in log 20 over log 12, what did you get? In the back row, in the pretty pink, did you read me? What you have? 1.21. Now, what does that mean? That means that 12 to the 1.21 should equal 20. Try it once. Try typing in 12 to the power of 1.21. Does it really equal exactly 20? Is it really close to 20? Why would it be off a little teeny tiny bit? Because we rounded. Got to always watch out for that. So when you're checking for your answers and whether or not you think you did it right, if it's off only a teeny tiny bit and you rounded, of course it's going to be off a teeny tiny bit. All right, next one. Would you change that one to log form? That one's an exponential form. Change it to log form. Log base x of 14 equals 1 half. Now I ask you, which one would be easier to give you the answer? The black one or the blue one? The blue. Because the blue one, all you'd have had to do is do what to both sides? Square both sides. And the answer would be 14 squared. Anybody know that one in their head? It's 196. That means 196 to the 1 half power would be 14. All right, so the point is that sometimes changing it to the other form doesn't help at all. Okay, it really doesn't always fix your problem, but a lot of times it does. So a lot of times if you take this one and you change it to this form and you're like, that doesn't help me. It makes you realize, oh, maybe I should go back to this one and think of some other way to solve it. Oh, I could just square both sides. And I've got the answer. See what I mean? So it still helps to switch it to the other form because if the other form is even more complicated, you can go back to the first one and just solve it. All right, moving on. Some properties. This is really critical to understand. Uh, th there's, these are like, these make your life way simpler. Okay, because you can solve all these problems by saying it equals x and then rewriting it in the other form and then get the answer that way. But there's also a way to get the answer like immediately. Like I know this answer for this problem is 1. I know this answer is 0. I know this answer is y and I know this answer is r. Done. See how fast it was to do four problems? Because I know the rules. Copy those down, and then I'll show you what I did. This is worthy of the star. I usually only do this once every day or maybe every other day, where I say this is like the main thing for today. This is pretty, pretty powerful stuff. All right, so here's what I did. I set it equal to x, and I said b to the x is equal to b. So can you see from looking at that that x has to equal 1? That's the slow way to do it. So if you forget any of these rules, just do it that way. x has to equal 1. This one, set it equal to x, and then say b to the, what? x is equal to 1. And then, why was this answer 0? Because if I put anything to the 0 power, it'll equal 1. So do you get how the answer is 0 here? This one. If I go, put an x here, b to the x equals b to the y, do you get how x must equal y? As in the answers right there. And this last one is definitely the hardest one. You have a question on that one before? Okay. All right. So this last one's the hardest one. This one, everybody thinks it's written in log form because it's got the word log in it, but it's not written in log form. It's written in 
exponential form because it's got a base and an exponent. So you've got to rewrite this that's in exponential form into log form. Log, and what's its base? B of what? When we go to the other side, remember we always start these things by saying equals x, and I s broke my rule and I got to stop breaking my rule. Log, what's its base? B of, go over the other side, x has to equal log base B of r. Look at those two. Log base B, x. Log B, B, base B, r. Do you get that x has to equal r? That and that have to be identical. Right? All right. That means that the answer, the x is what we call the answer. The answer is r. So the answer to this one was r. All right, so if you understood that, you'll be able to say what this answer is. What is it? You didn't understand them then. Okay, let's go back and look at them again. I'm going to go back to what the properties are. Otherwise, you would have all known that answer in two seconds. All right, so I'm going to look at them one more time. Make sure you get this. Just a little OCD in action here. There. Now I feel better. Okay. This one, the answer is always going to be 1. This one, the answer is always going to be 0. This one's answer is always going to be whatever's there. And this one, if these two are the same, then that's the answer. R. If these two are the same, then the Y is the answer. Get that? All right. So now, one more thing. Would you look at this one and this one? And do you see that they're pretty much the same property? Because it's like if these two are the same, then the answer's right there. If these two are the same, then the answer's right there. What's right there that I don't see? A one. And so it actually is pretty much the same property. All right, so now I ask you again. What's the answer to this? One. See how easy that is? If these two are the same, the answer's one. Now, what if you go blank on the test and you're like, I don't remember? You can always set it equal to x and say 6 to the x equals 6 to the 1. And then what's the answer? x equals 1. See, you can still figure them out if you need to. But you shouldn't have to. Oh, I thought I had a bunch more. I'll just do some by hand. Log base 5 of 5. What's that one? 1. Because you look for the exponent on this one. That'd be one. All right. What is log base 28 of one? I'm hearing zeros and I'm hearing ones. I'm going to set it equal to x and prove which one it is. 28 to the x equals one. Now what do you think? What's x equal to? Zero. The answer is zero. Let's try another one. Seven log base seven. 24 is equal to 24. Okay. Because if these two are the same, that one's the answer. I could prove it if I wanted to by putting an X there, but I did that already today. All right. How about this one? If you're trying to solve that, your first thought should be, can I write it any other way? What could you write? P to the A equals M. So if I wanted to know what M was, it's P to the A. If I asked you what M is, the answer is P to the A. If I ask you what P is, well, I can still use this formula. Put it to the what power to get the p alone? 1 over a. So it's p is m to the 1 over a. And that's the same as the eighth root of m. But you don't have to know that. That's OK. All right. 
one. Who could rewrite that 49 in a different way so it tells me the answer? 7 to the second, because then all of a sudden you've got log base 7 of 7 to the second. And do you see how if the 7 and the 7 are the same, then the answer is 2? All right. So this answer is 2. How about this one? We could rewrite this as log base 6 of 6 to the, the 1 half power. Square root's the same as a half power. So what's the answer? 1 half. Because now my 6s are both the same. This one's the same as this one, so the answer is this one. 1 half. These are shortcuts now. If you had to set this up the long way, you would say equals x. Somebody made you prove it. You'd say equals x. And then 6 to the x equals 6 to the 1 half. And now that's got to equal that. x is 1 half. All right. This one, either you see the answer or you don't. What is it? It's 11. These two are the same. So that's the answer. All right. This one gets a little more obscure because it's doing two things to you. It doesn't have a base. Or does it? If it doesn't have a base, what base does it have? 10. So this is really the same as if I had said this. And then you've got to know that you can rewrite the 100 as 10 squared. So this is really log base 10 of 10 to the second. And now you know the answer is what? 2. Because if these two are the same, that one's the answer. 2. This one, rewrite it as log base something to the something. And then figure out the answer. Use your pencil. And I'll let you put it down for a little bit there, and I was all right. Pick her back up. M squared. What did you get? Log base 10 of, yes, final answer? One fifth. Get that? Because 10 to the square root of 5 is 10 to the 1 fifth. All right, this one, it looks like it doesn't have enough pieces, but it does. What's the answer? Six. Because there's really a little log base 10 right there, and so the tens are the same, and therefore the answer is six. All right, good enough on that page. So we need to know these parent logs and how they look. I've been focusing on ln of x, which I told you looks like this. And I've maybe told you before that a natural log is actually a tree that's been blown over, right, or cut down. Do you see how this sort of looks like a tree that's been blown over by a big windstorm? Okay. So anyway, that's a log, in case you ever get confused about a exponential versus a log. All right, so that's a log, and it's the natural log. But log 10 looks like that, but different. This one's the same as log base e to the x. That's what ln means, log base e. Do you remember that from yesterday? What does a log blog mean? That means log base what? Of x. So this one's got a base of e, which is about what? Minus 7. Then... Which one should be, if they were on the same graph, one of them is this, one of them is this, which one do you think is tighter to its axis? The one that has the bigger base. So this one's the blue one. Because it's got the bigger base. Do you remember how that's exactly like these two parent ones? Exponential. E to the x. That's about 2.7 to the x. What if it was 10 to the x? It'd be a lot tighter to the axis because its base is bigger. The black one would be like y equals e to the x. About 2.7 to the x. 
The bigger the base is, the tighter it gets to its axis. Same thing here. This guy's got a bigger base, so it's going to be the one that gets tighter. Shouldn't have done that in red. I'll do it in blue. It's going to get tighter to the axis. Okay? All right, now. If we were asked to do, to do all of these things, domain, range, continuity, increasing, decreasing, symmetry, boundedness, local, ext local extrema, etc., they're all easy questions is if you know what the picture looks like. So, do you know what LNX looks like? So it should be pretty easy. So here's LNX. Looks like that. I'm in a little high there, but that's all right. Still get across the same point. It's domain. That's from left to right. Did you ever notice it never crosses over zero? So what's it so mean? Zero to infinity. Yep, there is an asymptote line right here on, on log, in case you didn't know that. Okay, the range of it. How low does it go? Negative infinity to how high does it go? A lot of people think it limits out somewhere in here with an asymptote. It does not. It keeps going up. It just goes up really slow. So it doesn't have a top, so it goes to infinity. Con continuity. You see any breaks in this thing, or is it pretty smooth? It's smooth, so it's continuous. Uh, where was I? Yes. Increasing or decreasing? Increasing. I always read from left to right, so increasing. Symmetry. We don't mess with this kind of symmetry. There may be point symmetry where it's like a symmetry around a point, but we do not try to make you learn that. Next thing is boundedness. Is it bound? When it comes to up and down, is it bound? Uh, local extrema, is there any high spots or, or low spots? So then there's none. Horizontal asymptotes, is there any lines that go vertical, like across, not vertical, across like the hori horizon? Nope. And vertical asymptotes, yep, told you about that one at zero. Wait, is that y equals zero or x equals zero? x equals zero. And then behavior. On the left side of this graph, granted it'll never go way over here, but on the left side, its left side, which would be over here, it's going down. So down on the left, left, down. And on the right side, is it going up? Yeah. I know you generally like to think of them as going up like this, but this one's rising too. It's just rising really slowly. All right, I think, oh, one more thing. If I gave you this problem, it would just mean that the graph of log, the natural log has been moved. So here's natural log. Where should I move it? Left, right, up, down. Left, how far? So I'm going to hold this spot right at the axis right here. I'm going to just slide it over to, okay, so now there's my graph now. Okay, go back here to where I was. Okay, now, this guy, don't let it fool you. It's not 3 to the right, this is a common mistake, because they think, oh, it's a minus 3. It's not the same thing. That 3 could be moved to the other side, and I'm going to call it ln of negative x plus 3. What do you think now? 3 to the... Left or right or up or down? Three to the left. Grab it. Three to the left. One, two, three. Now what? The left, right. Left, right, flip. Yep, over the y-axis. These are hard for some people, but it takes, it's got a pivot at that point right there. So it looked like that. It's a left, right, flip. Okay, this time, this one three times taller, this time moved up one. Any questions about those? All right, I think your homework for today is going to feel pretty easy. So, got the rest of the time to work on that. Homework for today is, for those of you following along at home, page 308. Problems 37 through 40 and 41 to 51 odd. That is adding only a few more problems on. I, we will be grading this on 
Monday, both last night's and this one. So get them done. And the rest of the time is work time.